In this session, we will cover the carrying amount versus the recoverable amount in relation to the equivalency basis, also known as the apple-to-apple -apple basis. According to IAS 36, the carrying amount of a CGU shall be determined on a basis consistent with the way the recoverable amount of the CGU is determined. As the goodwill impairment assessment is carried out by comparing the carrying amount of the CGU to the recoverable amount of the CGU, we need to ensure that the carrying amount and recoverable amount are on the same basis. In practice, we say apple to apple basis. If the carrying amount is made up of apples, but the recoverable amount is made up of apples, pears, and bananas, then this is not a fair assessment. Put another way, the assets that combine to estimate future cash flows to determine recoverable amount, be it VIU or fair value less cost of disposal of a CGU, has to correspond with the assets used in determining the carrying amount of the same CGU. Another point I want to make is that some assets and liabilities are included in the carrying amount, even though these assets and liabilities are not subject to impairment test according to IAS 36. For example, inventory, which falls under IAS 2 inventories. Inventories is measured in accordance with IAS 2 and not IAS 36, but we include it in our carrying amount for equivalency reasons because when we were generating the recoverable amount, we needed to take into account inventories, networking capital for free cash flow planning used for determination of the recoverable amount. Back to our Walmart example. Say we derive the future cash flows and determine the recoverable amount of Walmart's New York CGU group. For the New York CGU group to generate cash flows, the stores would need fixed assets, so furniture and fittings, Walmart brand name for marketing purposes, networking capital for operations, share of corporate assets, for example, IT systems, office space for HR and accounting staff. Hence, all these are required to generate the recoverable amount of the New York CGU group. In the same way, the carrying amount of the New York CGU group should also include fixed assets, intangible assets, networking capital, and corporate assets to ensure a fair goodwill impairment assessment. But wait, what about interest-bearing debt, which is borrowings, long-term loans? We should only include debt in the carrying amount if we deduct the interest expense and debt repayments from the cash flows when calculating the recoverable amount. Therefore, always maintaining the apple to apple basis. The preferred approach, however, in practice is to ignore the interest expense and loan repayments from the cash flows when determining the recoverable amount and also exclude the long-term debt from the carrying amount. This is also known as enterprise value basis. We talk more about enterprise value and equity value in our session on business valuation. You can refer to that session for more details.